Lotar, I, like you, am interested in ultimate reality. And you tell me that I have to understand quantum physics, so I'm ready to do that. And you mentioned four different characteristics that will give me clues, and I want you to explain these to me. The first is non-material. What does that mean? Okay, um, if you allow me to say that, you do not have to understand quantum physics. Just have a reasonable understanding of the phenomena. Because quantum physics means, you know, mathematics yeah, and so yeah. on. We don't have to do that. Non-material, the basis of the material world is non-material. We have to say that because when you try to find out what is matter, you know, the Greeks were the first to have the idea, you divide matter in smaller and smaller parts, mm. and then they said, all of a sudden, you end up with something you cannot divide anymore, atomos, atom, is indivisible. Now, when you get to that level, all of a sudden, you lose all matter. Because when you have a, a single atom or particle, and it is in a vacuum, it becomes a wave. The wave is described by Schrödinger's wave mechanics. It doesn't have units of matter or energy. It is just form. It is information. There are patterns of information. So that's why when you have the wave of the complementarity in, in quantum physics, when, when particles can be waves, the waves are non-material because they're just numbers and just information. They're just numbers. And actually, you know, already the Greeks had this idea, all things are, are numbers. Mm. Okay. Number two is non-empirical, means we can't sense it, uh, we can't test it, <clears throat> we can't know it through our senses. Yeah, you, yeah, we can't observe it. You know, we don't even, you don't even have to think of our senses, but you can't observe it even with an instrument. Why not? When you have this particle, atom, a single one, and it, it is not interacting with anything, becomes a wave the wave spreads out in space. So you could say, where is it? I just said it's a thing, where is it? The thing is, it is nowhere. It is actually nowhere. It is in a state of potentiality or probability. The wave gives you a probability to find it. Yes. So if you set up several detectors, each has a certain probability to find it, one all of a sudden gets it and you don't know which one. So the waves are non-material. They are also non-empirical because when you observe them, you destroy that state. Then you have a particle state. But they're still existing in a real sense because they are potentialities of where they might be based on these probabilities. And they are something real. Because the so it's real but non-empirical. Yes. In a way, non-empirical by definition because seeing it destroys it. Yeah. And you call that a virtual state, the potentialities. Potent well, yes, um, virtual states really are in atoms and molecules. You can think of a, of a molecule like a mountain range. There are countless ranges, and all are filled with steps, mm. energy steps. Each step represents a quantum of energy. It's a quantum state. A molecule stands on one of these states, and then all the others, infinitely many, they're empty. Each state also is characterized by a waveform, that's uh, its wave mechanics. Now, when a system stands on one of these states, the others also exist, but you can't see them. They're empty, there's nothing there to see. But they exist, they exist as a part of the logical constitution of the system. The waveform is predetermined before it becomes visible. If they wouldn't exist, a molecule couldn't jump into such a state. Right. And atoms, molecules constantly can make quantum jumps because they have empty states into which they can jump. <laughs> okay, number three you talk about the wholeness of the universe as though everything were interconnected in some way. That sounds like a new age kind of uh, yes, uh, spiritual. Yes, okay, it's a new age, I can't help it. <laughs> uh, you, you know, the same way we even find 
uh, statement, you can make statements that agree with some religious statements, <laughs> but so what? I mean, we, um, the, the interconnectedness, we don't really know what is going on in a non-empirical realm. The only thing we have indications for is that it is something wave-like. At the same time, it is not material, it's, it's like a pattern, like a form, it's information. Then, you know, s some of the pioneers said, well, information, does that mean uh, information is for a mind, there's a cosmic mind? They said, no, that's crazy, it can't be. And um, then, you know, one of the British physicists, um, he said, you know, there is something strange about atoms. In, in physics, when we make a measurement, then it always makes sense because the instruments are connected with a known background. Mm -hmm. When you have an instrument watching a piece of light moving through the sky, it makes sense because you know the background, namely the moving planets around the sun. And he said, the, the problem with atoms is there is a visible surface, but we don't know the background. So he said, it's like your brain. We see a visible surface, but you don't know by your observations what the guy is thinking. So he said, let's think the two together and say the background of atoms is mind-like. The universe is made of mind stuff. The scientists weren't looking for this, but there was step by step and more arguments. And finally, somebody said, look, the background of the world is mind and everything visible comes out of it. If you accept the point that the background of the universe is mind-like, then it also leads to the idea of a wholeness because the elements in it, they are, they are thought-like. The, the idea is they're hanging together like the thoughts in our mind. Um, you could argue this way also in a physical sense by saying the visible world is an actualization of these, of these thoughts. If they were not coherent, we would have a chaotic visible world. But we don't. We have a, we have a, a lawful world. And so that would indicate that there is a... Uh, a wholeness, an interconnectedness. A wholeness, yes. So what you're doing, in a sense, is is combining the third and the fourth, because the fourth was mind-like, the universe yes. is mind-like. The third is is wholeness, and and basically you're saying you can't separate. They're all they're all interwoven, non-material, non-empirical wholeness of the universe, mind-like. Yes. It's if, a it's if a it continuum. Is, if it is thoughts, they hang together, so there's wholeness. Uh, then it's also not visible because you can't see my thoughts, you right. can't see the ones of the universe, and so on. It's it's all these characters, they're all interdependent in a way. So are you saying then that at the fundamental level of reality are thoughts? You could say that. I'm not saying, I don't want to say that. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I, want, I'm willing to say it. <laughs> okay, that's what yes. I want to know. Certainly at the fundamental basis of things are not things. They're patterns, they're thoughts, um, they're forms. Thoughts are in a cosmic mind.